brilliant. Okay, uh, so welcome to Yoga in My Garden today. And uh, it's an experiment today just to see how it will work. And then hopefully maybe we can do it every Wednesday, making this a regular class, which if people like the time and things, that's what we'll do. Uh, so I'm going to move outside. hard as well for me to see really everything properly from here but um, can you just let me know uh, that uh, first of all can you see me okay can you see me okay yes I can great and yeah is that yes I think and can you uh, from here Brian 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 Brian, come here, quickly, quickly, right, just look at the screen, just look at the screen, oh, look, just do, okay, oh, look, at the screen. look at the screen, look at the people, right, uh, first oh. of all, uh, it's a thumbs up, if you can see me nice and see clearly, anything. give a thumbs up, I can't see anything, look at the picture, you have to turn around, oh, there's so in the white, that's why you're so, no, no, <laughs> Oh, oh dear. There. I can't see a thing. I cannot see a thing. He's hopeless. I can see better, I think. Forget it. Okay. Uh, so can you hear me? That's the most important thing. Can you hear me? I'm going to come in to check. You can. Great. Good. Okay. Right. I have um, just sacked my uh, assistant there. Okay. He has been sacked completely <laughs> for inappropriate dress. Um, and uh, for complete and total incompetence. So uh, it's just you, you uh, all you lot of me. So we're going to start, and we can start by sitting down and uh, just taking a few moments sitting down. And as I said, I don't necessarily need to see you. I'm hoping that you can still see me, though. That's the only thing. Uh, so uh, I know I'm a little bit of a distance away. It's quite hard to get that right. Should have experimented a bit there. So take a moment or two just sitting down nice and comfortably as we do normally, focusing the mind inwards and I'll use the chimes to begin the session. So as always with me, we've started a little bit late. So if we're okay, if we can finish at 10 past 11, that's where we'll finish because it's an hour's past. <laughs> And so we're just setting our space on this lovely morning with a beautiful blue sky. Got lovely fresh air out here. Close your eyes, focus inwards on your breathing, allowing the belly, the ribs and the chest to rise as you breathe in and breathing out, allowing them to sink back. Trying to breathe as long and as deep as you can. And then any thoughts you can put to one side. Making this hour just for you. Nice, fun, informal hour for yoga. If you can do the Ujjayi breath, then you can start to do that by narrowing the throat. So breathe in and then breathing out. You get that snoring sound. Really calming breath. Try and make sure that you're not rounding the shoulders. Make sure that the head isn't sinking down. The energy is traveling from the tailbone all the way to the crown of the head. Few more. And then making the next one your last one. And then you can open the eyes, and if you want to. Do the, we're going to do alternate nostril breathing now, but uh, you can use the thumbs. So you're using either thumb and into the fingers or 
a lot of you know what you're doing here. Right hand practice is Vishnu Mudra, which is little finger uh, wrapped inside your ring finger, folding the first two fingers down so that you can use thumb and fingers. And the other hand, just resting it wherever. So your choice of how to do that, we're gonna start by breathing out through the left nostril. And then we breathe in, left nostril. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. So I'm working to a count of four. Breathe in left. Two, three, four. Close left. Breathe out right. Two, three, four. Breathe in right. Two, three, four. Close right. Breathe in left. Two, three, four. You can change this if you wish. Make it longer or shorter. Breathe in left. Two, three, four. Breathe out right. Two, three, four. Breathe in right. Two, three, four. Close right. Breathe out left. Two, three, four. So you can do one more round. Continue on like that. I'm just moving just to check everyone is okay there. I can see that's looking good. And then when you've finished, if you just bring yourself down to the hands down to your knees. And I'm just checking the setup again. That's looking better, actually. Looking good. And then you might want to blow your nose when you finish that. And if you'd been outdoors like me, just think of all the fresh air that you would have been getting out there. If you're indoors, try and do that by a window because you really do want to get fresh air. You don't want to be doing it somewhere that's very stuffy or anything like that. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're just gonna start moving the shoulders a little bit, warming ourselves up, turning the shoulders one way. Turning them the other. A little bit of a wiggle on the mat. As I said, I'm, I'm just going to take you really through what would be something that I would really do in the mornings, my own practice. This is really what we're doing now. Uh, but it's also um, part of your um, Wellness Wednesday. It's the wellness program that Drew are putting together. But actually, um, Really, it's just what I would do normally anyway. So you can hold on to the knees and now if you just bring the spine forward and then come back, arching the spine. So we breathe in, we come forward and we breathe out and we arch the back. So these are actually Kundalini rolls. I don't know if you can hear the trains going by there. I'm not that far from the train line here. I don't normally notice the trains that much. Suddenly they've got incredibly loud. And so you can quicken it up a little bit if you wish. So we're trying to wake ourselves up. And you can slow it down if that works better for you. And then we're going to do some rolls around. So circle around using your knees just to support you there, making some nice rolls around, breathing in as you come back, breathing out as you fold forward, circle around. So also just to remind you, all of this is gonna be quite easy, but obviously if anyone feels that it's not for them, you just do what works best for you. So everybody knows that. I know you all do know that anyway. 
and then we do it the other way, just circling around. So you can make bigger circles, smaller circles, and really get that breathing going. And I'm trying to get fresh air into my, into my lungs because otherwise I tend to be a bit indoorsy during the day and um, it's all stuffy. And I think that this is what we need. Lots and lots and lots of fresh air. And then just bringing yourself back to sitting and then taking your right hand down, lift up the left one, look up towards the hands, just the plane going overhead and then coming down underneath the arm. Taking that side stretch, breathe in, lift up, touch down, other side, coming over, coming down. Breathing in as you lift all the way up and then touching down both hands. So now we're going to lift up, left arm, slide the other arm down just a little bit and then take a circle around. As we go around, it's like we're drawing on the mat, breathe in and then breathe out so a circle around we're going to do one more we're circling it all around coming all the way back and this time just take a stretch out to the side look over to the hand and then lift up and then take that circle just one more time around and this time touch down so the other side lift up length slide over and then circle. See how low you can get as you do this. How much breath you can take as you go around. Circling. And we're going to do it one more time, but just that slight variation. So you come down, you come around, you lift up, look over, look to that hand and then really stand down and then we're sitting nice and tall just for a moment here and getting ready to take the legs out in front and a little stretch and a wiggle of the legs and a wiggle of the toes you can maybe even separate the toes so you can wiggle them one at a time you can do that if you're isolating those toes and then Make sure that you're sitting nicely on the mat. So just take a little rock from side to side. Nice straight back, hands either side of the hips, lift your heels, push the knees off of the mat or push the knees into the mat rather. So the heels are off the mat and then release. So do that a couple of times. Nice knee strengthening one. And then taking your left foot to your right thigh, push down on the knee. And we're just going to do the normal ones that we normally do here. So you can take the foot over. I'm going to take my fingers in between the toes. Don't worry, you can take them over if you prefer. Take a little circle around of your ankles. Keep yourself nice and tall and straight if you do this. Circle one way, circle the other way. These are your ankle cranking rotations. And then you can release the toes, take the hands to the foot, rock the baby, side to side, side to side. Is the other leg nice and active? Are they, is the foot, uh, toes pointing up towards the sky? I'm going to start saying sky here, I think. Uh, do you want to take the foot into the elbow? If you do, can you take the foot up higher without actually bringing the head down? Then can you take your hand to your shin? And I think that's the easy way, just a little rock around, circling the ankle and the foot. Um, but you can take hands to foot, nice big rotations around now, hip openers. And then just take it the other way, circle around in the opposite direction. And then we release that leg down, give a little tap from the top to the bottom and heel of the hand coming down in through the inside, the outside and try and get to the sole and to the toes. Nice little brush of the sole of the foot and then release that leg down. And feel the difference between the two legs before you do the other side. Foot to your thigh, wiggle on your bottom just so that you're sitting correctly, so that you've got a nice upright spine, not slouching down. I'm not watching you, can't see anybody here now because it's the sunshine and um, 
my assistant was absolutely useless then, I have to say. That was a useless idea, wasn't it then? Anyway, uh, so you're opening up the hips here, just very gently, not forcing, and then taking the foot over, fingers in between your toes or over, so that you can rotate your ankle around, give it a little bit of an assistance. Get the ankle joint moving there and do it the other way as well. Not too much, not too long there. Take the hand to the foot, rock your baby, but keep upright, don't forget that. And choice is there. If anyone wants to go for the next stage, foot to elbow, and it's a gradual working its way up. So you may be surprised over time, but gradually, 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 foot will come up towards the mouth and you can kiss the baby there because that's what you want to do and then you can release take the leg take the hand to the shin take the hand to the foot nice big rotations around or stay with the smaller ones so don't force this and the other way circling around and then we release the leg out give it a stretch out tap top to bottom again, heel of the hand. Remember to bend the knees so that you can get all the way down to the insteps, to the toes, brushing the sole of the foot and feeling that you're really relaxing the leg. You're actually um, stimulating meridians there. And just a little shake out, a little bit of a wiggle from side to side. Going to go on to our hands and knees. So, you have padded knees here maybe if you need them. And then from here, just going into your flowing cat, circling your hips around. Big circle around, you should have small circles, follow their bigger circles. And you can make really big circles if you want. And you could even choose to go forward and back basically what I do in the morning is I just do stretches that feel good for me. So if I need it, then that's what I'll do. Um, if I don't feel I need it so much, I won't. So I might even come all the way forward and then all the way back. You could even come forward and you might even lift up the thighs. So you're going into an up dog. But you can just stay with those little circles around. So. Do what you feel you want to do. Do what feels nice for your body. You're just moving the spine and just moving wherever you want to move. That's really good. And then we're going to bring ourselves back to our heels. Take a stretch out. Knees come apart. Bring yourself into your swan. Stretch yourself out there. Breathing into that. Flex the toes. Bring yourself back to your tabletop neutral position again, and then cat cow, lower the spine, bring the head up last, breathing out, arching the spine, head between the arms. Really allowing that flow to get going and warming up your spine, especially after being asleep. You could be all in the wake for hours, wouldn't you? I know. Could be been out shopping and doing all kinds of things, unlike me. So I'm, uh, this is like the crack of dawn for me. So I'm, uh, I'm a late person. So for me, this is just warming up the spine. Okay, so we're going to come to your neutral spine. Give a little wag of your tail now. Little wag of the tail. This is where you definitely don't need the builders on next door's roof. So you say get very strange ideas there. And then you're going to tuck the toes under, push down with the hands, and we're just going to lift up just a little bit with the knees, and then release, and then come back onto the heels. So we'll do that again. So we're going to come back, tabletop, push down with the hands. Uh, tuck down, tuck under the toes, lift up the knees, but only about an inch. You may not even be able to see that. And then release and come back. So that's just, that's actually quite hard to do. And then you're going to come back, tuck the toes under, and this time you're going to go into down dog. 
Young Dog isn't for you and it isn't for everyone. Walk the hands back, <clears throat> go into a squat, and then just come up slowly in a um, like a ragdoll fashion. So cut out the down dog bit. We're going to push down with the hands. If you're coming into down dog, then lifting yourself up, pushing down the heels, maybe readjusting your feet, and then you're going to walk the dog. If you're in, if you did the roll up, then just stand there for a moment in mountain pose. Had us really important pose anyway. And you can bend the knees, push the heels down, try and bring the uh, shoulder blades together, rotating the arms, pushing the bottom up into the air. Do that for a few breaths because this is quite a strong grounding pose. And then you're going to walk the hands back to the feet. Just as maybe some of you have already done. Hang down, put to the sun, forward bow, breathing in, and this is the lifting up. I'm hoping I'm still on camera somewhere there. Have I probably drifted away from the camera? Don't know. No, I don't think I did. So then we're going to do some activations, uh, which is what we do in most classes. I've got some sunshine here, which is beautiful. So I'm just taking the shoulders around. Lining them swing, the arms swing, and um, you can see why I try to get things to weight down my mat. Clearly forgot that end of the mat. So breathing as you do this. So imagine that you're skiing down a mountain here now, and you can breathe in and open up to the sunshine, and you can breathe out and take the arms back. So, fearless flight and happy smile. Fearless flight, happy smile. Make sure that you're breathing with this. So breathe in as you open up and breathe out as you lift the arms up behind you. Happy smile, fearless flight. Great big smile of the arms. One more time coming back into your fearless flight. Lifting the arms up, take them up over your head, down through the center, back to standing. Give a shake out of one hand, one arm, shoulder. Uh, really just shaking out that side. I'm hoping everyone's got nice soft knees here. You're not locking any joints. It's starting to get hot out here. See, I told you, it gets hot. No one ever believes me. So maybe uh, they'll start believing me. And then the other side, just shake out the hands, the elbow, the shoulder, and then swinging that arm just forwards and back a few times, taking the shoulders around a few times. Make sure you really bend those knees, circling those shoulders up, circling them back again, and then bringing one knee forward, one knee back. So you're doing a little bit of a walk and then roll through the soles of the feet just so that you're lifting off and turn it heels as you do this and then shoulders going forward and back and you can just take the arms down the hands down just outside of your thighs as you go there and then just opening up and then closing in opening up closing it. I'm just checking in case something came from the screen. I think it was okay. Could have been uh, someone else joining, but I don't think it was. So opening, closing, opening, closing, really open out, breathe in, really closing, and then taking the hands down, open the feet up a little bit wider so that you can let the arms swing around you. Let me check the phone. Okay here. And uh, so you can start to lift off the back here and touch your opposite shoulder, opposite kidney. Get a really nice big twist around you as you look behind, letting those arms swing around, getting everything nice and loose, and then coming slowly back to standing. And then shake the whole body, everything shakes. Absolutely everything, let, just let it shake. You're not controlling it, shaking, 
to where my hair will all start to fall out of um, its band, but still. So just really letting it shake. And this is great for removing tension. And then we're going to take the um, elbows back in, breathing in, and then we push out. It's a through the mouth. So you draw in, breathing in, and it's a ha through the mouth. And you can make it really last, nice and loud. So a breath in and a ha as you push out, depending on what your neighbors are thinking. So breathing in and ha. And do that one more time, thinking about drawing in that positive new energy and ha, letting go of anything that's negative and then releasing the arms down. Give a little tap to your leg, one leg, other leg, and then belly around in the line of the intestines if you can. It's clockwise apparently. And uh, then um, coming to your chest, you can just give a little tap or you can choose to give a little firmer tap with your fist and then down the center, the breastbone. This is clearing out our lungs. So I try and do this like every morning, especially now. And then shoulders, just first of all, your chest and then down the arm all the way to the fingers. And spend a little bit of time on your fingers and then the hands and then the inside of the arm, other side chest down the outside of the arm all the way to the fingers again a little bit of time there inside and then we're just going to do a sweep all the way down the arm and imagine that you're letting go of any negativity so you're sweeping that away out through the fingers make sure the knees are still bending a little bit and then the other side sweeping down warms me up as well out here and then down the leg, you're going to have to bend your knees quite a lot, go down, don't worry about that, do that. This isn't all about standing rigid, it's all about letting go. And letting your body just be down the chest, down the belly. Imagine negativity is falling into the ground and recycling there. And then the bottom, can you give a little more low? Sweep away to the bottom. You can also give a little slap to the bottom. A half flat, I need to sort of get a little bottom. I need to get that a little bit smaller. And then down again, sweeping away. You can give a little tap to your kidneys. And then just down your shoulders, they going behind and the other side and then we're going to stand nice and tall open up your feet and in the mornings i always like to do this i breathe in and i do a coming down breathing in so it's in through the mouth and out through the nose out through in through the nose rather sorry and out through the mouth breathing in and and you hang down over the legs Take a little sway around and then bring yourself slowly all the way up to standing. Make sure you're bringing those shoulders back and down. <sighs> and you should now, if you're outside, which you're not, uh, you should feel uh, nicely warm and maybe start taking things off. So I think it keeps changing out here, that's the only thing. So standing mountain pose, arms coming down by the sides chin is slightly in are your feet hip distance apart you might want to check all you do is just take the heel to the instep and just rotate on the ball of the foot just to check that you get that and i think everybody does and then because ebr1 is that foundation sequence we're gonna do that today we're gonna take the hands right hand to the belly button left hand comes to the eyebrows and we breathe in and we extend up as we take the stretch over to the side. Side stretch, lateral stretch, and then circle. It's a great big ball of energy. And then hand to the belly button, hand to the eyebrows, breathing in and over the other side. So really you're raising the energy up. Your third eye is just above the eyebrows, middle of the forehead, breathe in expand the energy upwards 
breathe out, get the stretch perhaps a little bit further over this time. And then like you're circling a wheel. And then again, breath in and breath out to the side. And then circle back, but keep the shoulders down, bring the elbows back, push back, squeeze the shoulder blades, breathe in and I'm lifting all the way up to the sky. And then I'm breathing out, still keeping the shoulders down, pushing the elbows back, squeeze your shoulder blades, get ready to come to your toes. See if you can lift up to those toes. And then you can come back with the control, coming all the way back down, taking the elbows back, squeezing and releasing, taking the arms down just to reset in your mountain again. And then hands to your shoulders, curling the fingers in, checking for any furniture, breath in and breath out. It's about 80% that you open up the arms. So don't uh, lock elbows and breathing in and breathing out. Drawing in positive energy and letting go of anything that's no longer serving you. Taking your arms back down to the side, drawing your head forwards, bringing it down, bringing it in. So if your movements for your neck, working on Rishudi, throat chakra, all about communication. Standing nice and tall, just taking your right ear, so back of right ear down to your right shoulder. Shoulders hopefully are staying down, back to the center, to the other side. And then coming back to the center. So we're gonna turn the whole head to the right, and back to the left. And coming back and then taking your hands to your shoulders, making some little circles with your elbows. You can stay with the little ones or elbows touching, big circles around, bend the knees, circle around, really releasing those shoulders, enjoying that lovely movement there. And the breath, get that breath going. As I said, prana, important, especially if you could be outdoors and then the other way. So you can visualize being outdoors and drawing in all that fresh oxygen into the body. And then you release the arms, just give them a nice little swing out. We're going to move into our Bollywood arms, little fingers and thumbs are coming out, thumbs are coming back. So you're rotating the shoulders, ball and socket joint, and the rest of the body is fairly fluid and you'll know what to do for how it works for your bodies really. So we're going to move the arms up that little bit higher <coughs> each time, coming up higher until eventually we get to shoulder heights and you can lower if you need to. You don't have to hold the arms here, but you can challenge yourself. So it depends who you are. And then palms down, palms up, palms down again. Right palm comes up and you turn to look towards that palm. Circle it around, turning in the other direction. And you can either keep the shoulders, the hands in line with the shoulders, or you could perhaps lower them a little bit if you need to do that. Please do that. Just from side to side. And I'm trusting you're smiling. So I'm smiling at all the neighbors here one side and the other side, sending out all this love and compassion everywhere. And then we're going to take the heel to the ankle, if you wish. Notice that you shouldn't have moved the foot very far, just raising up the heel so that it rests on the ankle. But do make sure it's resting on the ankle. If it's not, you're not actually standing correctly in Tadasana. So that's your way of checking as well. And this is your Bollywood thing and then taking the arms all the way down. <sighs> Quicker if you need to, and letting them swing. And we should have freed up all our joints now. Let's give a little shake out, a little wiggle out. Gonna open the feet just a little bit wider. 
So the palms of the hands now facing down, arms out, circle and round towards the right, one hand following the other, back to the center, other direction, looking behind you, getting that twist in the middle in the center at your waist, taking your right foot to the right side, left heel is lifting, making sure that you can touch your shoulder, your back hip, or just follow the hands if you want. Look over, should be your right shoulder, don't be looking over, breathe into that. This is where I notice the uh, leaves on the trees every day gradually disappearing. Got one tree there now with um, three leaves on it. It's got three beautiful red leaves on it. I'm looking over the other shoulder now. And then coming back, hopefully we did that. And then coming back to the centre and taking the hands behind your back. I'll just move out to the side just so you can see me. Make sure, I'm sure you all are. Leaning into the hands, supporting your back, breathing out, bending over the knees. So we take a lift up, breathing in, breathing out, coming down, lifting up. And rolling the spine, spinal waves here. Make sure those feet are not too far apart, that your spine is moving with this, and that you're really breathing into that as you do it. And going lower each time. And um, there's slight variations in one that I do in the back here, here one. Uh, so where I'm going to, um, come down, hanging down over the legs. We do that sway around, so that's in all of them. But the next one we do, we bring ourselves down into a squat. So people know that they can take that as a choice. You don't have to be in a squat if you don't want to. And I'm just gonna bring myself forward so you can see me a little bit better here. And then from here, we can also go to another option where we bring the hands up and we give a little wave of the fingers. You can just move the fingers around as well. Give a little wiggle of the fingers, a little wave of the hands. You're trying to sit fairly upright in this. Uh, or you could have just kept the fingers on the mat. We're gonna keep those fingers on the mat and then you're either just gonna take the heels back and we could do a little rock and roll here, coming back to the heels. And coming back, we're not straightening the leg, we're just doing a little roll. This is working your thigh muscles here, so you'll feel it there. And the next one we do, again, choice, but we're going to straighten the leg, bring the head down, hang down, and you should really feel that down your hamstrings to so breathe there, just for a or two. Hands should still be on the mat, and then you come back into your squats. And again, fingers can just stay here. So these are kind of, this is the one I don't put into the back care class. And then you take your hands up into your balance. And then you bring the hands back down to the mat and then heels come back. You could either keep the knees bent or straight the leg, bring the head down, stretching out the backs of the legs. Seeing everything nicely upside down, it's an inversion as well. And you've got the um, hamstrings being stretched. And then we're just going to come down one more time. And uh, one more time of the option here. And then this time, heels come back. And as we come up, we're going to roll up. Ragdoll all the way up standing, breathe in, stretch the arms overhead, a nice big stretch out one side, stretch out the other side, and then circle the arms down and around, shoulders coming back and down. How <sighs> we're standing. And so we're nearly there, and uh, we need to do a balance because it's always good to do a balance. We need to be balanced for the day. Uh, so we'll do the tree pose. And, what we'll do is we'll try and do it. It's a little bit of a challenge uh, for first thing in the morning. So first of all, we'll just do it as a flowing tree, the nice easy one. So mountain pose, standing nice and tall, just checking that everything is correct. Think about the 
pull, pulling you all the way up there to the sky. And then you're going to take the weight over to the left foot, lift up the right heel, place it onto your ankle. You could go higher if you feel that you can do that. Take the arms up overhead, breath in, circling around and up. Breath out, coming down into the heart. Breath in, breath out, breath in, breath out. Foot down, weight onto the right foot, heel to ankle, opposite side. Breath in, breath out, breath in, breath out. Arms coming out to the side. And down. So you can do the next one with your eyes closed if you wish. Heel to ankle, breath in, breath out, breath in, breath out. Breath in, spread your branches to the other side. Don't have to follow all my directions here. Breath in as you're raising the arms up. Breath out to the heart. So you can take your own time, your own breath. I'm gonna open up my arms, take the hands down. And then you could challenge yourself. You could keep your eyes closed. You could come to the calf if you wish. You could have your eyes open. It's quite hard if you have your eyes closed. So circling up, breath in, breath out. That's why you need a point of focus. And really why it's hard to do with the eyes closed. It's going to do it to the other side immediately, maybe to the calf. And lowering the arms to your heart. Lovely flow. And then if you're with me at the same speed, just standing there, just everyone catching up together so that we're standing in our mountain pose, eyes are open now. And then your choice now is to either just continue with that, doing that flowing one, or if you want to just challenge yourself a little bit, placing the weight onto your left foot and then taking your right foot. So Heel to ankle is the much safer, easier option. Calf, a little bit harder. Or can you take the foot all the way in towards the thigh? You're moving it up towards the perineum, really, at the top of your thigh. And then you can go into um, Richard's song, the classic version. I'm just going to take the arms. In fact, if we start here, this is the easier option to begin with at the heart. And then you can circle the arms up if you feel that you're okay with that. Put Thaya Mudra. So my index fingers are pointing upwards. Quite a strong pose here. I keep my eyes open, but if you can close your eyes, well, I'm impressed. Uh, you breathe into that. And then you can open up the arms into a smile, like your branches are spreading. And the idea of the next bit was supposed to be to bring the hand down to the knee. I'm going to come to the calf because that's going to be easier for me. And then you can sway over and just take your attention down to the knee. And you can fall over maybe, but you can just try that. You can just play around with it and bring the foot down. So you keep yourself nice and safe. And then we try the same thing the other side. So this is just playing around really with your balance. So the other side, but otherwise continue with your flowing trace. So wait to the other side, if you're doing this all with me, to the calf, to the thigh. Always make sure you're never pushing on the inside of the knee. I think everyone knows that anyway. Hands to your heart, hands above the head, crown of the head, fire mudra, drusty point with your gaze. The challenge will be opening up the arms, I mean, Shin Mudra there, taking one hand down to the knee, and that's where you shift your gaze, and that's where probably I fall over. That was better, wasn't it? And uh, that's surprising, actually, because I'm on the more difficult side, so I must be more focused. And then you try to come back and up and down with dignity and balance. Ah! Look good. I could see some things going on there because the sun has just changed a little bit. So give a shake out of the legs. 
Nice shake, one leg, the other leg. And uh, we're gonna bring ourselves back down to the mat now, breathing in. Again, that smile with the hands, breathing out, coming down, and then all the way to your mat. And usually, I always do butterfly here because it's quite a nice one to do. So soles of the feet together, lift up the spine, make sure you're not slouching down. And then you can use the elbows just to flap their knees up and down a little bit into your butterfly. Think about the butterflies flying around the garden. I suppose they're not now, but anyway. Uh, thumbs coming into the balls of the feet, opening up a little bit, maybe more, a little bit deeper here. And then flap those knees. And then just take your right leg out, bring the left foot to the top of your thigh and wiggle around on your bottom. And if you wanted a cushion underneath your bottom, you could actually do that. And then turn towards your right leg. And you can also bend the knee a little bit if you need to, and you can just slide yourself down. And it could be, I'm just gonna to go to the shin, maybe to the ankle, maybe to the knee, to the foot, and then relax into that. Breathe into that. So these are really just my stretches in the morning here. And then I'm going to bring myself up and take the right foot in, stretch out the left foot. And again, position that foot to the top of the thigh, lifting yourself out of the spine, taking that turn around to your left leg, sliding down. You can always put a cushion in as well underneath your belly. That also is useful, can be helpful. So don't force it, don't strain it. Forward folds, not necessarily going to be for you. Allowing the head to relax. Breathing into that. You could perhaps come down a little bit lower each time as you're allowing the out breath to release the tension. And then bring yourself back up. Take the legs out, both of them, lifting up and then sliding down through the center and maybe just coming down to the ankles, the shins, don't really need to go very far. If you want to catch a hold of your toes, you can pop the toes and then just bring the head down. You can relax and forward. But again, don't take this very far. Do this where you want to go. That's absolutely fine. Breathing into that. And then bringing yourself back, taking the feet together and open up your chest, look up towards the sky or the ceiling, whatever it is, and stick with that or bend the knees, push down with the hands. And I'm gonna go, I'm just going sideways so you can see me into a, like an upside down table here. Obviously this is much stronger. So don't do this if that's not for you at all. Stick with just opening up the chest and then releasing, coming back and then just bringing yourself um, legs out, taking the uh, left foot over the right leg. And you can either leave that leg out, which is probably fine for most people, or if you want to bring the foot in, just wiggle it around and make sure both buttocks stay on your mat. So we move into our half lord of the fishes. So the leg out is absolutely fine. Take your right hand now, pull the left knee into the belly, Hold the wrist, lift up out of the spine, and then take your journey around, looking behind you. And as you're pulling that knee into the belly, you're giving a nice massage to your internal organs. And then you can release the arm around, looking behind, trying to keep the shoulder fairly relaxed, spine is straight, breathing into that. You do the ujjayi breath here. Again, don't go too far around if it wasn't really for you. 
and then bring yourself back. Take your left hand to your left foot and your right hand comes behind you again. And you can just stay like this. Or if you want to hold onto the foot, you can, you can lift the foot and you can release the arm. So you get a nice stretch of the leg there again as well. And then release, take the legs out, give a little wiggle, wiggle lift the legs, wiggle the toes again, taking this time right foot over left. Again, keep the foot out, keep the leg out, pull up, and you're going to do that turn here, or take the foot in, but make sure that you're sitting on both buttocks so that you're nicely balanced. You can be on a cushion here, left hand, Pulling right knee in now to the belly, hand on wrist. And this is the thing that I teach, but um, it's, I've only ever known Drew to teach this. So you pull on that wrist so that as you turn into the knee now, you're looking behind you, you can really feel that knee coming into the belly. You're really massaging. And hopefully you've not had like, bacon and eggs for breakfast there. It doesn't work if you have. And then you look behind your shoulder, you breathe into that. And again. Half Lord of the Fishes there. Breathing, maybe Ujjayi breath here, maybe not just normal breath, don't forget, hung up on breathing. And then bring yourself back, take right hand to right foot, left hand behind you, open yourself up. If you want to hold on to the foot and stretch out the leg, you can. If you want to open up the arm to the side, you can. And they're just the options, really. And release. And then just release the legs out. Give a nice big shake. Everybody's still there, okay? So we're nearly there. We're gonna come into Shavasana soon, but we've just got a couple more bits to do before we get there. And we will finish at 10 past. We don't have a very long Shavasana because, um, well, I've just got up, so I know about you, but uh, I've just got up, so. Um, I don't have a very long shavasana in the morning. So we're going to come down onto our backs and give ourselves just a little bit of a rock and roll around on the back. And then if you want to take your hands in between your feet and hold onto the feet, we're gonna move ourselves into happy baby. Soles of the feet are in line with the ceiling. And this is definitely the one you don't want the builders on this soles roof from. And you can take a little roll from side to side there. And if you wish to stretch out one leg, you can. And then bend the knee if you want to stretch out the other leg, you can. And then bend the knee. And so we're going to bring the soles of the feet together Bring the knees out to the side, bring the arms up overhead. And because I'm enjoying it so much out here, I can see the clouds above my head. And just enjoy that for a moment. And it's really nice as well for the spine. Lovely way to release the spine here with this butterfly, supine butterfly. But we're not gonna stay here too long. Just a couple more breaths. Like I said, you can enjoy this for longer if you wish. And then taking the arms around, bringing the knees in and any little movements you want to make before you bring the feet to the mat. Try to make sure your head is directly on the mat, definitely not on anything like a stone. That would be very bad. That's where my head was. I thought something wasn't right there. Right, so then you're going to perhaps use a cushion between your thighs. But whatever happens, we're going to start to breathe in and then lift up just the tailbone, breathing out. So lifting the tailbone, we're going into bridge, but it's a flowing bridge. Try to use your thigh muscles, try to use your core, try to forget about the glutes, let them relax. Buttock muscles relax. Breathing in as you go a little bit higher, breathing out as you come back into the mat. Keep that going. Vertebrae by vertebrae, a little bit higher with each one. Breath in, breath out, lifting up, coming back to the mat. 
higher each time, going to your place, which works for you. Trying to button each vertebrae down, trying to make sure those thighs haven't drifted out. So the cushion works well for that. And then we come all the way up to the highest point that you're comfortable with. And when you get there, breathe in again, and then raise the arms all the way behind your head. Breathe out, stay up, take the arms down, breathe in again. And then as you breathe out, this time you can lower the arms all the way back. Lower these, sorry, right, sorry all the way back to the mat. And when you finally get there, buttoning in every vertebrae all the way to the bottom, you're going to rotate around, do a rock and roll, and then take the soles of the feet down, take the arms out, roll yourself over to your right side, and then turn the head to the left, belly twist. And if you wish to take the deeper option, take the top leg over, you might even be able to catch up your foot. No, no, but don't force it. Let's do that if you feel you want the extra stretch. Breathe into that belly twist. So it could be a gentle one, it could be a deep one. It's your choice. It's your practice, especially in the mornings. And then bring yourself back to the center. Gotta go the other side. It's nice for me to have the space out here. So rolling over to the other side, knees to the other side. And then taking the top leg over, stretching it out only if you wish. Make sure that your leg is not dangling. Make sure the opposite shoulder isn't drifting off of the mat. So it's important to keep the shoulder into the mat rather than worry about getting the legs over. Breathing into that. Loving watching the clouds moving around above my head here. The birds are flying around. The odd jet loving are coming over. Not so many these days. Bringing this up back to the center, knees into the belly. Any little movement you want to take, take them. I hope you're nice and warm wherever you are. Um, so you can take yourselves out to Shavasana. Arms outside, legs out, breathing in. And I will just lead you through that. I'm going to bring myself up sitting, just checking the time. Yeah, we've got. Five more minutes, taking us to 10 past for Shavasana. So bring yourself into that space. Just checking everybody is still there, okay. If anybody did need to leave, don't worry. Um, you always can, of course, but just um, take a moment before you rush off because always in yoga, you need to take a moment. Don't just rush around. So time here to relax, time to let go, time to focus on your breathing. And even when it's just a short shavasana, it's still important to relax, to let go. Time as well to set ourselves up for the day. Notice that flow of breath. Nothing different, nothing changed. Normal flow of breath. Breathing into that. Each out breath, feel that you're letting go. Feeling the earth is supporting you. And the earth is absorbing anything that is no longer serving you recycling it and bringing it fresh into new prana, new energy. So it's important that we let go of anything that's not serving us to allow it to be recycled and used by something else that needs it. Everything is operating in a circle. Everything is being reused and going back again. Everything is positive. It's just not always for us at that moment in time. Just notice that your feet are relaxed, feet are relaxed, ankles, calves, 
and chins relaxed. Knees are relaxed, thighs, buttocks, hips relaxed. Lower legs relaxed. Small of the back, pushed into the mat, relaxed as the natural curve of the spine curves. Middle upper shoulder blades, shoulders, down the arms, into the fingers, relax. Belly, ribs and chest, relax. Whole body is relaxed. Neck, relax. And your face, relax. Everything is exactly as it should be. Everything is unfolding as it is supposed to do. Everything is exactly as it should be. In order for everything to happen as it is supposed to do. Just relaxing, enjoying Shavasana for a little bit. So just start to become more aware now of your body lying on the mat and your surroundings and the sounds around you. And start to think about taking a few little movements, your fingers, your toes. You might want to take a nice big stretch out of your arms. You might want to bring the knees into the belly, take a little rock and roll from side to side, easing off the back. And you might then roll over to your right side and stay there as well for a moment or two. Don't rush, don't hurry. But when you're ready, if you want to use the hands to bring yourself up to a nice comfortable seated position, keeping your eyes closed or softly focused. And I'll give you a minute or two just to get there. And then when you're there, just rub the hands together and get that heat and warmth into the hands, placing the hands over the eyes, bathing the eyes, give a little massage to your third eye. Eyes now can be open to the forehead, to the temples, a little massage of the face, the neck, around the chest and a little tap of your head all the way to the nape of the neck waking up your mind there bringing yourself back into your day circle the arms around the body taking them down to your mat and ground yourself into the earth connecting yourself back to the rest of the day going to take the hands to the knees and um i sometimes finish with an arm sometimes i don't outside but we'll have an arm today Breathing in. Oh. Hands to the side. Breathe in. All that lovely energy and prana into the heart. Take a little bow and namaste. The light in me recognizes the light in you. And thanking you all, thank you very, very much. Um, hope you enjoyed that. It was quite an informal little session, really. Um, I recorded it partly to see how it will work. I'm just going to stop that.